Joe Stewart Rattray, Director of Information Security at Australia's BRM Holditch, an accounting firm and consultancy, has become a virtual CISO for many of her firm's clients. What do you see as the sort of big challenges for uh, companies at the moment in terms of security? Some of the issues are ones that, that, that we hear about so frequently. Big data is an issue, a lot of data coming in, what do we do with it? And of course, coupled with that is, is um, personally identifiable information. You know, in Australia, we're, we're coming down to that, the wire now with uh, mandatory breach reporting uh, being mandated by government. So that's going to make a change in the environment, but that's, that's across the world. We're seeing that across the world, that that's one of the big issues about the amount of data we've got, the privacy that's required around that. Um, and also we're looking now at things like advanced persistent threats and, and some of those challenges that are facing organisations. Um, you know, ISAC has just done a lot of work in that, that area because it, it's been recognised that, that our constituency needs some pragmatic assistance. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, often with APTs, a, a company won't be aware that they've been uh, breached for months, maybe even years. Quite a percentage of organisations recognise that they are at risk, but then they don't really know how to address it because the problem with APTs is they morph. They, and they keep morphing until they, they reach the objective that they want. Oftentimes that's intellectual property, so it's not until something hits the press or, or is out there that they, an organisation actually knows they've been got. So, so in your role as a, a virtual CISO, if you like, what's the first thing that you do? Do you, do you have a conversation with the business leaders? Yes. or? I actually believe information security has to speak the language of business. That's been a failing in the past when we've been more IT security rather than information security. And what's the next step? Do you identify the most valuable information that's at risk? or Some organisations do understand what their, their, their uh, most important information assets are and others don't. I'm often surprised when I go into an organisation and ask them that question, they'll say, oh, we don't have anything that's particularly important. We don't have anything that's particularly confidential. Well, do you have financial records? Do you have, are you holding you know, personnel data? Are you holding client data? And all of a sudden, you know, the scales are removed from the eyes. Lights they can off, see, yeah. exactly. So you're right, it's something that organisations are not very good at understanding that these are valuable information assets. I actually get into quite a bit of trouble on, on this score because I actually say that probably the most important asset an organisation has is its information. You can recreate an organisation using new people, but you can't do that by, re you can't recreate a corporate history right. once that's been destroyed. Do you think governments are doing enough to help security industry professionals get their job done? We're seeing a lot of discussion in Australia in particular around the area of cyberbullying, which is fantastic, but it's being targeted at schools, where yes, there are, there are there's certainly an issue there, but it's actually, prevalent through the workplace and with individuals as well, to adult individuals. So I think that's something that needs to be addressed in, in, in you know, fuller order. Australian Computer Society are looking at putting a cloud consumer protocol together. So there is some good work beginning to be done in, organ, in governments, but whether it's actually helping the professional do his or her job, I'm not sure about that because I actually think there needs to be more discussion with um, practitioners at a high level, high level practitioners and the organisations that represent them to get a better understanding of what's really required out there because sometimes governments are operating in isolation.